When it comes to small form factor builds, this is definitely the low profile GPU I'm going to be going with for now. I mean, this performance is amazing. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the most powerful low profile GPU on the market right now. These have been out for a little while and I've been wanting to get my hands on one, but the price has kind of stopped me until now. So uh, basically a lot of these have been popping up on eBay and Amazon for a decent deal given the performance that this thing's putting out. And when it comes down to it, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love my small form factor builds and usually I would recommend something like a GTX 1650. Great card, it's a dual slot low profile design, and you know if you had to go with the single slot, you could go with like a GT 1030, that's going to be a lot less power, or even the new Radeon RX 6400. Now we've got a lot to test in this video, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. This is the RTX A2000, and it's a PNY variant. doesn't require any extra power. It's got a TDP of 70 watts, and it's on par with something like the RTX 3050 at the stock clocks, but we can do a bit of overclocking to this to unlock a lot more performance out of this small card. Now when it comes to pricing, it's actually pretty decent when you're talking about a refurb model. Taking a look at the GTX 1650 low profiles right now, anywhere from $249 up to $350. But a refurbed A2000 on Amazon and eBay, $249. This is the exact one that I picked up, but there are a few things to note here. It is a refurbished card. I've done a lot of stress testing with the one I got, and I haven't run into any issues. I've also done some overclocking with it. Haven't had it shut down, overheat, or anything like that. It's actually in really good condition. But a lot of these do not come with a low profile bracket, so you have to buy that separately. And you can pick it up on eBay for $6 to $12. I've got one on the way, and I will have a full small form factor build with this card coming up soon, so keep an eye on the channel. But in this video, I wanted to show you what kind of performance this thing can put out. The one I picked up on Amazon did come with these four mini DisplayPort to full-size DisplayPort adapters. These are the locking style from NVIDIA. And you'll definitely need them because we only have mini display ports out on this thing. And, you know, creating a modified bracket from one you already have might be a bit of a pain. So you probably just want to order a low profile bracket from eBay that fits this right out of the box. We're working with the same form factor as the GTX 1650. So if you've already got a build that you wanted to do a bit of an upgrade on, then this would fit right in there with the correct bracket. And it only pulls 70 watts. No extra power is required for this card. It draws it all from the PCIe slot. So we've got the RTX A2000, 3,328 CUDA cores, 104 third gen tensor cores, 26 second gen RT cores, and six gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Now I've seen 12 gigabyte models floating around, but those are gonna be a bit more expensive even if you wanted to pick one up refurbished, but six works out really well. And when it comes to core clocks, on the official website, it states that 1200 megahertz is the boost clock, but I've seen this fluctuate between 12 and 1500 megahertz. Like I mentioned, I will have a small form factor build video coming up soon using this card. I'm just waiting on that bracket to come in. But uh, for this video, we're going to go ahead and test this in one of my newer PCs I built. This has an i5-13600K. We've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, and we don't have to worry about any kind of CPU bottleneck with this GPU. We're going to see exactly what can be done with this thing right now. And uh, real quick, here it is, 13600K. We've got uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. And of course, we've got the RTX A2000. Now, when it comes to the driver, you can download the Quadro driver, but that's not really made for gaming. So what I did was just download the RTX driver, something that would go along with, let's say, the RTX 3050. And it does work here, detects it as the A2000. 
And again, I wanted to talk about these core clocks because it was a bit all over the place. Now on the website, it states that 1200 megahertz is the boost clock on this card, but I've seen it fluctuate between 1200 and around 1500, a little over 1500 in game. It's got a maximum TDP of 70 watts, and unfortunately we can't change that TDP at all. There's no third party application I've been able to find to go up a little more to get a bit more out of it. But we can statically overclock the core clock by about 400 megahertz, which really unlocks the performance with the A2000. But in this video, I kind of wanted to see what it would do with just the stock curve it's got here for those core clocks. So we're not going to do any overclocking while gaming. But now I want to jump right into some gameplay to show you what this thing can do. And first up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. Okay, so with this setup here, we're at 1080p, very high settings, and DLSS set to quality. Remember, we're on the stock clocks with this GPU, but with a 300 megahertz overclock on the A2000, we can actually run this with no DLSS, high settings, at an average of around 71 FPS. But personally, I still think it looks just as good with that DLSS set to quality, and this game is fully playable on the A2000. I mean, we're getting some really great performance given the form factor and power of this card. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some GPU benchmarks. So here we have 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a total score of 50,781. Firestrike managed to 15,541. And finally, we have Time Spy here with a 6,674. Now these were all at the stock clocks, but I did a little bit of overclocking with the A2000 and in Time Spy with just a 300 megahertz overclock, we were able to score 7,500 with this card here. I've taken a look online and I've seen some people manage to overclock this by about 500 megahertz on the core, which is going to really up that performance, but I'd say a conservative overclock, 300 megahertz, we don't have to worry about a fan curve or anything like that, does work out really well on the A2000. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in here, and with this, after I did the overclock, it didn't reset itself, so I had to reboot the whole system. But we're overclocked right now at 1440p, totally maxed out from the settings, and we can run this game at full speed. I mean, we're not having an issue whatsoever with Injustice 2. But uh, like I said, I'm going to save all of this overclocking for my next video. So we're going to bring it back down to the stock clocks, and we've got Cyberpunk 2077. This is definitely exceeding my expectations. 1080p, high settings, with DLSS set to balance. And I probably should have just set DLSS at quality because we definitely get over 60 with it. But with it set up like this, we got an average of 86 FPS. And in my next video, I definitely want to do some 1440p testing. I know it's not going to run at, you know, max settings or high settings on a lot of these newer AAA games, but I think we could get away with medium settings on some of this stuff at 1440p with the A2000. It's been a while since I've tested Dirt 5, and this one has always given lower-end systems a run for its money, or lower-end GPUs a run for its money, but with the A2000 stock clocks here, we're at 1080p high settings, so we can get an average of around 73 FPS. Not bad at all for how hard this game is to run in the first place. Next on the list, we've got God of War 1080p high settings DLSS set to quality. We can get an average of 68 FPS, so maybe taking DLSS down to balanced, you know, if you want a little more out of it, would work out. Or with a lot of this stuff, locking it right at 60 is probably the way to go. And with a little bit of an overclock, I think we could get rid of DLSS on a lot of these games that we've tested. I also wanted to test out Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and this little card is definitely trucking along with this one. We're at the recommended settings, so once you boot the game up, it's going to ask you if you wanted to go with recommended. I just chose yes. And with it set up like this, we got an average of 131 FPS, a low of 92, and it did turn DLSS to balanced, but I still think it looks great, and this is some awesome performance coming out of this small form factor card. Here's The Witcher 3. I know it's an older game, but it's still super fun to play, and we recently got an awesome update. We're using the DirectX 12 back end. We've got a lot of new settings that we can mess around with, like DLSS. It's set to quality right now. And high settings, 1440p, perfectly playable. And the final game I wanted to test here was Elden Ring. We're at 1080p high settings. Unfortunately, we don't have any DLSS that we can mess around with, but if you take a look at the core clocks on the A2000, they're jumping up to close to 1600 megahertz here with this one. So 
So I've still got some testing that I want to do with the A2000 in a smaller form factor build, but as it sits right now, this thing is putting out some amazing performance for its size and TDP. Coming in at 70 watts, we don't need any extra power. I think this is an awesome card, especially if you can pick it up for $249, which is kind of the going price for these used cards right now. Really wish it was single slot, but I don't think we're going to see this kind of performance for a little while when it comes to a single slot card, but this will definitely get us by with a small form factor build, and we can go super tiny with it now and have some great performance. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave a couple links in the description. And if you want to see a mini PC build with this card here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. Like always, Thanks for watching.